What's going on guys, Snaggy here and it's time to break down the 2024 NRL Grand Final. The four-peat is complete, lads. We'll go through everything, guys. We'll talk about the controversies. We'll talk about the good stuff. We'll talk about the bad stuff. We'll talk about where both these teams go next year. I'm still buzzing from it. It's 10 o'clock at night, 10.30 at night. And uh, I just wanted to do this video while I was fresh because, man... What I just witnessed was pretty damn special, guys. Now, just before I get into the footy, guys, it is the end of the year. I just want to thank each and every one of you that's tuned in every week, watch the vids and all that sort of stuff, man. And I don't normally talk about stuff like this, but I went through some pretty rough stuff this year. I know I don't talk about it, but doing these vids, chatting rubbish with you guys here and on our Discord and punting with you lads and streaming, it's been some of the, you know, it's been... Um, one of the shining lights in my weeks and stuff like that. So thanks everyone that's joined. Thanks everyone that's subbed. Had a goal of hitting 5,000 at the start of the year. We smashed that so early. I upped it to eight. We fell a little short of that. But man, I, I love it. Won some money, lost some money. Had some good times. Had some awesome weekends. Had some bad weekends. But hey man, that's the way it goes, man. So love every uh, each and every one of you lads. And uh, can't wait for next year. Can't wait for the international games first, to be fair. That's going to be goddamn awesome too. So... Let's get into this one. I don't know why I was so nervous for this game. I just because I think there was so much on the line for both these clubs and uh, in particular Penrith. And I do love a dynasty. I do love watching greats be greats. I love I love watching undefeated boxers put their title on the line. I love all that sort of stuff. So for me, this was absolutely huge. The best players in the world, the two best teams in the best form going at it i absolutely loved every second of it now let's just get the controversy thing out of the way if you watched my stream you would have seen that i actually thought that melbourne storm try was a try i actually did watching it from different angles i was like oh maybe maybe not i'm not great at picking these things i've never been good at seeing whether someone's you know when the ball flicks their finger in a you know those instant replays to see if someone knocked it on i've never been good at picking forward passes and some of those grounded ones i'm like well it probably was a try but i don't know man apparently i just finished watch finished uh, finished watching the telecast on channel nine there and they did a press conference and apparently footage will come out today or tomorrow apparently the bunker has about 10 other angles we don't have and apparently they showed an angle where he clearly did not hit the line. Um, even so, that still brings them short. If Even if he slots the goal from the sideline, it still brings them two points short. And then I saw a few people saying, uh, well, the momentum or that. Well, that's we don't know. So let's just use this for an example. And I'm about to give Melbourne a huge rap, so I don't think I'm bashing Melbourne or Melbourne supporters or anything like that. How do we know? That, okay, that, let's say they give the try. He slots conversion. Penrith kicked the ball down, Melbourne Storm dropped the ball and Penrith scored another try. It changes the whole course of the game. So um, I'll show you the reason why the Penrith Panthers won this one. And it wasn't um, a 50-50 bunker call or whatever you want to call it. Possession, an extra full six minutes in possession. Completion rate, 88% to 79%. 2,253 kilometres. Uh, so 2,200... 2, 2,253 metres, 2.2 kilometres, ran to 1,800. Post-contact metres, 717 to 610. Four line breaks to two. Tackle breaks, 53 to 29. Average set distance, a full 10 metres better. Melbourne did a great job with the fast play of the balls. 20 offloads to 18. Now let's go down to this good stuff. Missed tackles, 54 from the, Penrith, from the Melbourne Storm, 30 from the Penrith Panthers, errors 13. That's why Melbourne Storm lost the game, because Penrith were substantially better in all the areas that matter in a grand final. I thought Melbourne Storm in this game, other than the errors and the missed tackles, were absolutely incredible. Penrith Panthers threw a lot at them. I heard a few people saying I thought Penrith's attack was clunky. I don't think it was. I thought Melbourne Storm defense was absolutely enormous. I thought guys like Harry Grant, Katoa, I thought I thought Munster and Jerome Hughes actually tried the tails off. They just got really shut down even harder. I thought Melbourne Storm threw everything at them and Penrith were just better on the day. That's my general breakdown. I thought Penrith Panthers were clinical. I thought they did everything pretty much as close to perfect as you could get it. I always say if you have less than 10 errors, you've got less than 30 missed tackles, 
and you run for two kilometres in a game and get a quick play the ball. Was a quick play the ball. I know if Melbourne's was quicker, but it is a quick play the ball. Three and a half seconds is is fine. You're going to win way more games of rugby league than you lose. So, and complete over eighty percent, which they did. Penrith are better, man. The Penrith are better, and it's just it's just pretty damn special what we witness, man. I'm not going to sit here and tug off Penrith Panthers for this whole video. Um, I just want to talk about some players. Penrith are going to get tugged off a lot over the meter the next week, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to Channel 9 and uh, everyone else. But we'll go through some some players and just talk about how the game sort of panned out, and then we'll go through some actual player stats because there were some special stats in this game, seriously. First, Brian Pappenhausen. Look, Brian Pappenhausen is a little bit in a similar boat as Clint Gutherson. Gun players, small bodies, not powerful through contact. I've been saying this all year. I said it all last year too. In fact, I started this in 2022 when I sort of started saying when Pen when Parramatta were genuine premiership contenders, I said, I don't think they can win a premiership with Clint Gutherson at the back. Why? Because you can't do what this guy right here does, Dylan Edwards. Dylan Edwards didn't have any time to ball play. He didn't get any breaks through the middle. He didn't do anything like that. But what did he offer out the back? What did he offer out the back, lads? Look, no stats. 249 metres, 84 post contact, five tackle breaks. Pappy didn't have a bad game, but what did he didn't get those line breaks or anything as well. What did he what did he offer? Not too bad. Not too bad. 146 and a line break assist. Look, nothing wrong with that. But you get what I'm saying? That's a lot of metres, bro. <laughs> difference coming from the back end. Even him passing the ball off two guys like Coates, you've got to remember to stop and pass the ball backwards. You're essentially robbing yourself of 10 metres, which you did to Xavier Coates about three or four times throughout the game, maybe to Warbrick and Coates. I thought they were all to Coates, but you get one of, because he knew what happened every time he took a carry. He got hit, he got dragged, he got bullied, he got ruffled up, and Penrith got a... Uh, Melbourne Storm got a slow play of the ball. Then the second carry, they got manhandled again. So... That was a pretty big deficiency for me. I thought Warbrick, Howarth, Nick Meaney, and Xavier Coates were all brilliant. Um, Will Warbrick and Xavier Coates were absolutely enormous in this game. Again, I thought Munster and Jerome Hughes were great, just got pretty shut down. Tui Kamakamitha's first carry was absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Harry Grant was damn near... I mean, there were so many good Penrith players, you could never do it, but... He was damn near being the best player in the park. He tackled himself to a standstill. I cannot wait to see how many tackles he makes. We'll check that in a second. I thought Josh King was absolutely enormous as well. Bloor and Katoa. Katoa in particular was absolutely amazing. Trent Liero, I didn't notice a whole heap, just being honest. Um, I'm sure he was fine, uh, but I don't remember him doing much. Where I was like, wow. Uh, especially when you compare it to the guy standing across from him. What a player. What a player. He must have been a bees, you know, what away from getting the Dally M, seriously. He was absolutely enormous. I thought Wishart was pretty good, but he because Melbourne were getting pretty ragdolled in the middle, I feel like not Cleary, um, Bellamy brought him on a little earlier than he would have liked. I definitely think he looked like he could have had some success if he got brought on with about twenty five minutes to go. He got brought on in the first half. It was a little bit hard. I thought Welsh actually came on and was pretty nice, but nothing crazy. Alec McDonald knocked his first ball on. It's not great. Now, um, Vel um, Velapu, Lazarus, he, he was actually, I mean, he got about 10 minutes, but they were a nice 10 minutes. So I actually thought the Melbourne Storm were great. And I'm going to I'm gonna get into them again in another minute, talking about how I think they're going to go next year. Uh, now let's get to Penrith Panthers, and then we'll go through their stats, and then we'll talk about next year. Dylan Edwards, enormous. I thought Taruva was really good. Um, Isaac Tungo and Paul Anamotti. I was a little worried about them throughout this game. Now, I'm, I haven't been on this Isaac Tungo hate bandwagon where everyone thinks he sucks in it because he's, he's leaked a few tries here and there. I've been saying this probably for the last month or two. He's actually really good when he has those four play, three players around him that he's used to. When he's got Liam Martin, Nathan Cleary himself, and then Toto on his outside, he is awesome. He was taking carries that... Some of the hardest second rollers that have played the game would have been absolutely proud of. When he was getting turned back under, he was absolutely tearing it up. Paul Alamotti, exactly the same. Oh, sorry, just before I get off Tungle. They ran that play right at the end. That would have 10 minutes to go. 
sweep out the back. They hit Anderson, who was looking nice. One-on-one. I wouldn't say he had space, but it was one-on-one, and he was just outside the shoulders of Isaac Tungo. And Tungo hit him. Like, we're talking, like, Grant Anderson... Oh, sorry, Howarth, sorry. Do, have I been saying Anderson this whole time? Howarth is, has been a second role. He's a big, strong man. Bang, hit, drag. They dragged him out. That was just about the game, boys. Um, well, it was. That's what won them, the, the, to me, sealed it for me. Paul Alamotti then also gets put out on a wing because Brian Tottles off. They boot the ball to him to a height, and he takes a better catch over the head specky than I saw on the AFL grand final last week and not only that he scores a try in the corner one hand he's not a winger remember wingers drill that every week those tries in the corner like that he, he runs over slots ball bum incredible uh, Luai awesome but not I'm not like whoa like he was like for example not in a conversation for the Ch- Clive Churchill Nathan Cleary was pretty damn special playing with one shoulder Broken hand, wrist, whatever he had as well. Solid. His kicks were... He he did his standard one pretty mediocre kick. And the rest of his kicks were just absolutely pinpoint. Uh, goal kicking wasn't great tonight. But it was... Uh, it was pretty damn heroic, man. And Nathan Cleary... It was, must have been pretty damn close to Clive Churchill as well. Set up that try with Liam Martin. Just special, man. Absolutely special. It was uh, a pretty pretty heroic effort, man. I'm not going to lie. thought Moses Leota's first and second stint were brilliant. I thought Fisher-Harris did enough. I was a little worried about him in this game. Mitch Kenny was slapping in defense. Liam Martin slapping, scored the try, and also set up that one. I know he didn't get the official try assist. Cleary puts a pinpoint kick up. He snatches it one. Again, another better take than I saw in the AFL grand final. Snatch. Moses Leota ran the wrong line. He actually, if Moses Leota just runs to under the sticks, he, he probably gets put over. Unfortunately, he runs into players. He puts it to Alamotti. Alamotti goes over. Uh, I thought Sorensen looked like he hadn't missed a beat. He was great. Isaiah Yo, just s- such a special player. There was two carries in this game in the second half. I don't know exactly when it was. Bit of a blur still. But I'm pretty sure that in the final 20 minutes where he just... Caught the ball. There was a set defensive line. He just hit the seam and just literally dragged three blokes for eight or nine meters and played the ball like. It's just like I know, like that's not, never will never make a highlight reel, but for someone and I'm sure a lot of you do too that appreciates the game within the game, because there is there is a game within the game, and that's where. The real, you know, the real, let's, let's call ourselves real rugby league fans love. They, they, we, we don't just love Xavier Coates jumping over DWZ to score a try and win the game. We, we love the game within the game, and Isaiah Yo wins that game every time. He's incredible, man. Thought Garner came on and had some real nice carries too. Lindsay Smith and um, Liam Henry were great as well, and um, Schneider. Uh, didn't get on the park. Shout out to Eisenhoof as well. I know uh, he didn't get a run, but look, he's filled in. He's He's been that guy where he just fills in every time there's a player down, does a job. You know, you don't get to a premiership if you don't have depth like this. So, you know, you, you've earned your ring too, brother. Shout out to you. All right, let's have a look at some of these player stats, and then we'll talk about next year, boys. All right, let's have a look at the Storm first. So, like I said, Pappenhausen, these metres are very admirable. It's a very... Like I mentioned, Clint Gutherson. That's what he does in a game. He does his 146. He gets his line break assist or a try assist. All that stuff. But yeah, it was just they needed they needed some meters there. They needed some more meters. Will, Will Warbrick, Howarth, Nick Meany, and Xavier Coates for me were absolutely enormous. And these numbers absolutely back them up too. Now, just before we get on to that, I'd love to see them as tackles on the edges. Uh, all right. There you go. Nick Meany. That pretty much just erases that good game I said he had. Eight missed tackles is too many. Will Warbrick, two. Jack Howarth, zero. What a game. Nick Meany, eight. Xavier Coates, two. Jerome Hughes and Cam Munster, three and five. Too many. Harry Grant, five. Complete pass for Harry Grant. He was out on his feet and trying his absolute ring off. Absolutely incredible. Now, let's have a look at these Ford's meters. 
How did their forward pack go? So we've got Tui, two carries for 22 metres. Again, his first carry was absolutely brilliant. Didn't get much out of him after that. 22 metres for two carries. That's good carries. 11 metres a carry is great. But Josh King, eight carries for 96. That's brilliant. Uh, Katoa was great. 14 carries for 135 metres, 50 post contact. Um, Christian Welsh. Christian Welsh actually was okay, five carries, but... Ali McDonald, he made that error early, but six carries, 50. They were, this is what I'm saying. They were pretty good. There was just a couple things that let them down. They were just a little off, and Penrith were as close to... Per, not perfect, but like as close to... Like I was talking about the game within the game. Their game within the game was perfect, if that makes sense. Uh, but, you know, like there was a few errors there. There was a few this and that. The attack wasn't slick slick, but, you know, all the, the Melbourne, the game within the game... They definitely won. I'd say if Penrith were a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, Storm are about a 7 or a 6.5. Dylan Edwards, 249. Sonny Taruva, Isaac Tungo, 135. Look at this. Paul Adamotti, 101. Brian Tortall went off at the 55th minute, 58th minute, and ran for 213 metres, 87 post contact with no line breaks. So that's just all grunt. I said this during the thing, but during our stream, having Brian Torto in your team is like having Spencer Lenu and a really good winger in your team in one. He is the one, I've always been a big fan, like really sort of admired how Penrith keep their salary cap in check and won't overpay for players in positions, even if they are guns. I think Brian Torto is the exception to that rule. Up his pay, boys. He is worth more than 600k a year. He is incredible. Uh, Jerome Huard, 22 runs, 200. Oh, sorry, that's um, uh, 17 runs for 137 meters, one line break assist, one try assist. Is that Jerome Luai? Yeah. Nathan Cleary stats. 205 meters, one line break assist. One try assist, five tackle breaks. Let's see these missed tackles. Four and three, so a little higher than they would have liked. But look at these edges. Sonny Taruva, none. Isaac Tungle, one. Paul Adamotti, one. Brian Tortort, none. That's, there it is, boys. It's uh, pretty damn special. Let's have a look at Isaiah Yo. Man, Fisher-Harris, 157? Damn. Didn't feel like he was double as good as Moses Liotta. <laughs> he did one of those, uh, that's one of those sneaky Payne Haas ones. You know when Payne Haas, oh, Payne Haas will be quiet tonight. 157. <laughs> Isaiah Yo, 233 metres, 73 post contact, one line break assist, five tackle breaks. Lindsay Smith, off the bench, 134, 54 post contact, one line break. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. As far as the actual day went, what a day for rugby league. Two points decided, two or four points decided the the Queensland versus New South Wales Cup. Was it two or four points in the women's game? And then eight points in the grand final. Special day, man. It was crazy. 80,000. I saw a few people saying, oh, it wasn't a sellout. You guys, so uh, yeah, bro, there was 3,000 single seats. Who gives a shit? Last, last, last year was 83,000. This was 80. Melbourne Storm, not a huge fan base in rugby league. Penrith Panthers, not a big area. <laughs> Penrith is not a big area. Uh, when Kid Leroy actually performed, don't care about Kid Leroy at all. That was cool, man. I do not like Kid Leroy at all. I mean, like, I'm not I'm not 18, so, like, you know. It was pretty cool, man. That was pretty cool when all the lights went off. It was a nut show, man. So shout out, to Telstra, shout out to Telstra for putting it on. Shout out to the NRL. Shout out to everyone. Absolutely nailed it. Um, now let's talk about next year real quick. Penrith Panthers losing a lot. Now, they're going to miss... They're going to miss Fisher-Harris massively, even though he's down a little bit this year, and they're going to miss Jerome Luai a lot. 
Now, I personally think Blaze Talangi and Isaiah Papali'i come in. I have a feeling they're going to try and use Isaiah Papali'i as a middle forward, and I think he could do it. Not many people actually know this. Oh, this is a terrible call, my memory, by the way. But um, when Fisher Harris came into the league, well, fuck, not even came into the league. When he he spent like three, maybe four years, even as a lock, and was not a big lock. He put on a bit of beef. He filled up as you do as you get older, and you you hit the weight room and all that sort of stuff. I have a feeling they have a similar plan for Isaiah Papali'i to play in the middle because he's explosive. He's got big, thick legs. He's a very similar size to Fisher Harris. He's got a quick play the ball. Definitely doesn't have that ferociousness of fish, but I'm sure that'll <laughs> come just being being at Penrith. Uh, I have a feeling they're going to put put some meat on him, get his minutes up, and try and play him as a middle forward. And then Blaze Talangi, I think he is the first choice for the number six. I personally think Blaze is going to be a better player than Isaiah than than Jerome Luai, but I don't think Blaze is going to be better. This last year and the year before, Jerome Luai first plays Talangi next year. I think Blaze is two, two, three years away from being a really good number six. So I think Penrith do come down a peg. And uh, I don't think they probably win the comp next year. Just just my personal opinion. I just I just don't think they win the comp. Um, I might be wrong, but I just, I just have a feeling that they're going to be up there, right up there. But it would just goddamn take a miracle for them to get another one. Too many things can go wrong. They've lost too much depth as well. I'm not saying they can't. Penrith Panthers, Panthers can win the comp again. I'm just saying I, 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 I'm almost, you know, I'm, I'm, if there's a market for just Penrith Panthers not winning the comp, I'd probably take it. Now onto the, Pen, the Melbourne Storm. I think they do win the comp next year. That's my early prediction. Very early prediction. 365-day prediction. This team is still gone. It's still in its absolute prime, and they add Stefano Ikamanu, which is just huge. I think they've got a real gem in this um, Jack Howarth. I think, it's, you know, you've got to lose one to win one. That's always there too. Sean Bohr and Katoa, I think, will be even better next year, and I also think Trent Aero will be better next year. I think that they should be. And are my personal favourites to win the comp next year. I actually think Melbourne get it done. I really do. Uh, with Wishart there, off the bench is the super sub. Lazarus with some more miles in his legs. And then you put, obviously, Nelson back in here. You've got Nelson, Lazarus, Stefano Ikamanu, King, Tui Kamakamitha. Depth for days. Best hooker in the comp. Still got the best spine in the comp. you got front rowers that will understand and know the system better. Second rowers that understand and know the system better. I think they do it. And then they've got, obviously, if Paps or someone goes out, they've got Far Longo is back. They're, they're, they're stacked to the gills. I think the Storm get it next year. My early prediction. It really is. So they look really good to me. They really do. Um, that's it. We're done. 2024. Thank you very much. <laughs> we done, skis. Um, look, guys, um, if you've... Um, I'll have a probably a few day break, obviously, but we will get into some content for the the international game. I love the international game. I love watching the Kiwis play the Aussies. I love watching Samoa and Tonga uh, get it on, man. So I am pumped for this one. So uh, definitely keep the content up until that's done, lads. Absolutely cannot wait and absolutely bring it on. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.